In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Today is the Feast of the Holy Pentecost. The last feast on the major feast days of the Lord. As you know, we celebrate 14 feast day for the Lord Jesus Christ, seven minor and seven major, and this is the icon of the last feast day, the day of the Pentecost. On this very important day, we celebrate the descent of the Holy Spirit as the Lord fulfilled his promise. On the day of the ascension, 40 days from his resurrection, he said to his disciples, don't leave Jerusalem until you receive the power from on high. And when you receive the power from on high, the Holy Spirit, you will be my witness in Jerusalem, Judea, Sumeria, and to the end of the world. And the Lord ascended to heaven at that day. Ten days later, the Lord sent and fulfilled his promise, the Holy Spirit, and established the church on earth. It is 50 days from the resurrection and 10 days from the ascension. This is why we call the Feast of the Pentecost, because the word Pentecost is a Greek word that means 50, 50 days from the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. In the Creed, as you know, the Creed was written in two ecumenical councils. The first one, the Council of Nicaea, in the year 325, they wrote about the divinity of God the Son. And in 381 at Constantinople, they gathered together to defend the divinity of the Holy Spirit. And they summarized what we believe about the Holy Spirit as it written, we say to Ruli, we believe in the Holy Spirit, the life giving Lord, who proceed from the Father, we worship and glorify him with the Father and the Son, who has spoken through the prophets. This is the summary of what we believe about the Holy Spirit. As we believe in one God, and we say God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. What we say every day in the Creed, in this part, this is our belief about the Holy Spirit. I will share with you some details about our belief about the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, supported with many verses from the Old and New Testament. In 10 points. And I'm going to only select a few verses if you study carefully the Bible, we have hundreds, if not thousands, of verses about the Holy Spirit because we, spoke, we speak about the Spirit of God. Number one, the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of God the Father. Listen carefully. In the Old Testament, in the book of Isaiah, chapter 6, one, verse 1, the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. Here, call the Spirit of the Lord God. The Holy Spirit is the Spirit of God the Father. In the New Testament, our Lord Jesus Christ said in Matthew chapter 10, verse 20, for it is not you who speak, but the spirit of your father who speak in you, the spirit of your father who speak to you. So from the first point, we know the Holy Spirit is the spirit of God the Father. Not, that, not only that, the second point, the Holy Spirit is the spirit of God the Son. The Holy Spirit 
is the Spirit of God the Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. St. Paul said, God has sent forth the Spirit of the Son into your heart, the Spirit of the Son into your heart. St. Peter said, searching what or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ who was in them was indicating to testify beforehand the suffering of Christ. This is First Peter chapter 1, verse 11. So the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of God the Father and the Spirit of God the Son, and these together prove the divinity of the Holy Spirit, the divinity of the Holy Spirit. Number three, the divinity of the Holy Spirit, the Godhood of the Holy Spirit. When we say we believe in one God, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, one God, Amin. We believe in the divinity of the Holy Spirit. We believe in the divinity of Christ, the equality between the Holy Trinity. We believe in the oneness of God as well as we believe in the Trinity of God. Here, I would like to say what St. Peter said to Ananias the husband of Sapphira, Ananiah of Sapphira. When they lie, St. Peter said to Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart, filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit? You have not lied to men, but to God. Put this together, to lie to the Holy Spirit, you did not lie to men, but to God. This is to prove the divinity of the Holy Spirit. When we talk about God, God the Holy Spirit is equal with God the Father and God the Son. There is other two verses very clear. St. Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19, or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, which is in you? Your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Then, in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16, he said, Do you not know that you are the temple of God and the Holy Spirit or the Spirit of God dwell in you? So in the same chapter, he said, you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And also he said, you are the temple of God. This is indicate what? The Holy Spirit is God. This is to prove the divinity of the Holy Spirit. Number four, as we say in the Creed, and I just mentioned to you now, and we recite it every day, the Holy Spirit is the life giving. The Holy Spirit is the life giving. Of course, we said it in the Creed because we took it from the Bible. All the creeds. We took verses from the Bible because this is our constitution. The Bible is an inspired word of God. In Old Testament, in the book of Ezekiel, Zechariah, chapter 37, verse 14. I will put my spirit in you, and you shall live. I will put my spirit in you, and you shall live. This is mean that the Holy Spirit is the source of life. Put something and then became alive. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of life. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, it is the Spirit who gives life. This is in John chapter 6, verse 63. It is the Spirit who gives life. No doubt, it is God who gives life 
to death through the Holy Spirit. Through the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of God, the Spirit of God the Father, the Spirit of God the Son, the divinity of the Holy Spirit. Number five, and this is very important, the Holy Spirit proceeds from the Father. It's very clear in John chapter 15, verse 26, our Lord Jesus Christ said, the Spirit of truth who proceeds from the Father. John 15, 26. Also, number six, we have to say the Holy Spirit sent by the Son. Don't be surprised. There are specialists in each person in the Holy Trinity. We cannot say God the Father was crucified in our behalf. God the Son who was crucified. In the area of God the Father proceeded the Holy Spirit and God the Son sent the Holy Spirit. What is the difference between proceed and sent? Proceed means the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of God since the beginning and before the beginning because you cannot imagine God without the Spirit. But sent is in particular time. Today is the day 2,000 years ago when our Lord Jesus Christ sent the Holy Spirit. You know, it is in the same verse. It is in the same verse, John 15, 26, God the Father proceeded the Holy Spirit and God the Son sent the Holy Spirit. Our Lord Jesus Christ said the rest of the verse, the Helper, the Holy Spirit, comes when I shall, who, whom I shall send it to you from the Father. Why I emphasize about this is because this is one a big issue, differences between the Catholic Church and all the Orthodox churches. The first split happened in 451 in the Chalcedon Council about the divinity of Christ, and sorry, the nature of Christ. The second spirit, all the churches were together with one different until the 11th century. As we say in the Creed, the Holy Spirit proceeds from the Father and sent by the Son, and the verse is very clear, John 15, 26. The Catholic Church in the year 1054, the 11th century, he said, no, the Holy Spirit proceeds from the Father and the Son. So if you read the Creed in the Catholic Church and our Creed, this is the only different. It's a big difference. And it's not yeah, and our subject now to go in this debate. But it is very clear. The Bible said the Holy Spirit proceeds from the Father and sent by the Son. Because of the divinity of the Holy Spirit, we say in the Creed, and we got it from the Bible, we worship and glorify the Holy Spirit. Worship and glorify, we always said it to God the Father and God the Son. So if we say we worship and glorify the Holy Spirit, this is to prove also the equality of the Holy Trinity. We give the Holy Spirit worshiped you as the Spirit of God and to glorify him with the Father and the Son equally. You know, in our prayers, and I'm sure all of you know that, we say glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, the Holy Co-Substantial Trinity. And of course, we know that when we make the sign of the cross, we say in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and always conclude it with one God. Amen. Number eight, through the three persons of the Holy Trinity together, the blessing is giving. When we make the blessing, we mention God the Father, God the Son, 
God the Holy Spirit. Very easy. If you read the second Corinthians chapter 13, verse 14, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Yes, we believe in the oneness of God, but also we believe in the Trinity of God. And when we give the blessing, we give the blessing of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Of course, you know, in the divine liturgy, when we started the faithful liturgy, this is well known, and we got it from St. Paul epistles. We always say, the love of God the Father, the grace of his only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, the fellowship or the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We don't believe in three gods as some people accused us in a very bad way. They don't know what they're talking about. The love of God the Father, the grace of his only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, the fellowship or the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. It is very clear. Also, as we say in the creed, this is number nine, the Holy Spirit spoke in the prophets. We said it in the creed every day, several times, because we got it from the Bible. St. Peter said very clearly in his second epistle, chapter one, verse 21, for prophecy, never come by the will of men, but holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. The men of God as spoke, moved by the Holy Spirit, or the prophecy in the Old Testament and in the New Testament was by the power of the Holy Spirit. The last point today, just I will say the fruits of the Holy Spirit, just I say names. You know, St. Paul put it in a very clear, in Galatians chapter five, verse 22 and verse three, but the fruits of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, peacefulness, gentleness, and self-control. I may be today the subject, little bit theological subject, but it's very important. It's very important. If you know just a few verses about each point of this, you will be a good Christian. We cannot live without the Holy Spirit. We say in the third hour, as we said it today, you see how we said it different, tune, different way. Your Holy Spirit, O Lord, who sent force upon the holy disciple and honor apostle at the third hour, do not take it away from us. Give us the spirit of truth, the spirit of uh, spirit of uh, truth, the spirit. I forget. <laughs> it is very important. It is very important. And tomorrow we are going to start it the apostolic fast who would like to be a good person that the Holy Spirit work on us. You know, in the book of Acts, some theologians said the Holy Spirit, the, the book of Acts, can you call the, the Acts the book of Acts or the book of Acts of the Apostle or the book of Acts of the Holy Spirit? May the power of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Amen.